Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if this is your first time here. So this is going to be your love and spirituality reading for the air signs, Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini. And as always, I will be doing an extended video to go along with this one. So I will leave the link to that in the description box down below. Now let's jump right into it. Um, first, I'm going to give you the channel messages that I got while I was meditating for you, like right before I pulled cards. So what I was seeing... Well, the first thing that I heard was something that you didn't see coming. And immediately I got a very clear image of like um, a car driving and it's nighttime, but the car does not have its headlights on. So it's driving and driving and driving in the dark. And then suddenly there's like a head on collision. And I have to say this, I'm not saying that some of you are going to be in a car accident. Like I'm not making any type of like, um, uh, bad predictions or negative predictions. So don't worry. This is all just a big metaphor. Um, but basically what I was seeing is that the car gets into a head on collision. Um, so the car didn't see it coming because it was so dark and the headlights were not on. And to me, it's like a metaphor for when you dive into a situation and you're kind of going into it blindly, like you kind of d drive headfirst into it blindly and you can't really see the danger coming until it's too late. And then there's an impact. So some of you have experienced that and it looks like in March, um, you're finally going to be recovering and coming out of that. But only if you choose not to ignore the damage that has been done. Um, you can't just say, okay, well that happened, whatever. Like, yes, it was painful. Yes, it was traumatic, but that's fine. I'm just moving on. Like you can't do that, uh, because it's going to stay buried within you. Um, and it's going to start to manifest itself in, in different ways. So it can start to manifest as physical illness. Even if you ignore uh, certain events that have taken place and, um, just trying to kind of, uh, try to move on, it can just start to manifest in your body as a host of, of, uh, difficulties. So. You will be coming out of that, like I said, in March, but only if you choose to kind of face it head on and if you choose to understand the extent of uh, the impact or like the, the um, how hard the impact actually was, if that makes sense. Um, what else was I getting? Oh, power trips is what I was hearing. So I did hear that for some of you, you may be coming into a position of power and so you're being, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you're being asked to Make sure that you're being very gentle and delicate when you are in this position because you have the ability to greatly affect the people who are, what would the word be, under you, I guess I could say. Um, and it doesn't have to be like you're coming into a position of power like at a job or something. It could be that. But um, it could be a position of power like maybe you're in a committed relationship and um, your spouse is going through a hard time emotionally. Um, and so it's like you are being asked to kind of pick up the slack for them possibly. Um, wait. Hold on. I try to get that message again clearly because I feel like that came out wrong. Okay, rewind. You're not being asked to pick up the slack for them. You're being asked to, gosh, what am I trying to say? Oh my God, this retrograde. I cannot formulate sentences. Okay, let's say that your partner is going through some sort of uh, very difficult emotional time. Clearly, you're going to be the one that's more in control or you have like the upper hand or you have like this power because your partner is in a very emotionally vulnerable state. So you have to be very careful about what you say to them and what you do around them. And um, for example, if you and your partner, y'all have this relationship where you maybe make fun of each other a little bit and poke fun at each other. When your partner is in this emotionally distressed state, that may actually hurt them in a way that it usually doesn't. So that's what I mean by power. I hope that makes sense. So it's like needing to um, be very mindful of the people who are who are around you, who are a bit more vulnerable at this time, and who can't really um, can't really handle certain things or certain like harsh words or criticism, um, even if you're not meaning to. It's just be very careful. I hope that that makes sense. Um, for some of you, you are the person that's vulnerable. You're the one who's kind of in that position where um, where someone is having some power over you. Um, what am I getting for that? Uh, some of you are in the position where someone is having power over you. And I'm hearing that there's, what? That's such an odd message. Okay, I'm hearing that some of you are in the position or going to be in a position where someone has power over you. And so you're you're having to shield yourself the best way you can depending on who that person is. So if this is a person who 
is harmful or detrimental even when they know you're vulnerable they still do certain things to trigger you and things like that you may have to shield yourself from this person while you are kind of um, building back up your strength is what I'm seeing and when I say shield this can be like physically like uh, cutting ties with them for a while if it's someone that you can't cut ties with it's like just being very short and, and not giving them too much of your energy is what I'm seeing but if you do have loved ones who actually care about you, you know, and they see that you're vulnerable, I feel like they're not going to have any problem with kind of walking on eggshells for a little while just until you rebuild your strength. Um, yeah, so that's it for the channel messages. So let's move on to your actual messages now from the tarot cards. The first two cards out are the sun card. Um, and the three of cups. So very, very positive energy for your overall um, energy of March. The sun card is the most positive card in the deck. So I was kind of shocked to see this come out for the air signs because we have been struggling, especially the Aquarians. Oh my God, we've been struggling. So I was very pleasantly surprised to see the sun card come out as the first card. So in the month of March, you can expect a lot of positive energy. Um, it's kind of like a, a, a reset, like an emotional rebirth. You're feeling very childlike. You're feeling very pure. Um, and you just, you're full of life in the month of March, which is, which is a great thing because a lot of us have not experienced this in a very long time um so yeah this is very good news i was very happy to see that card come out with the three of cups being here i feel like a part of the reason why you're going to be in this energy is because you're letting go of any type of um, addictions or bad habits that you may have been clinging on to and as your life starts to improve the less you need these kind of toxic habits or co these toxic coping mechanisms um it's like you no longer want to escape reality because you're creating the ideal reality for yourself so very very positive um i'm hearing that for some of you you are going to get help for any deep wounds that you may have and because you're healing those things at the root you no longer have to rely on um these negative coping mechanisms to suppress the pain you see so it's like healing pain at the root um, and then seeing a drastic shift in your life where you're able to enjoy life without having to cope in destructive ways so very very positive for your blockage we have the six of wands and we have the eight of pinnacles so with the six of wands being here this is talking about success and i feel like this is specifically talking about self-sabotage um because like i said you are about to come out of a time of feeling like you need negative things to cope um some of you could be struggling with certain addictions um love addiction food addiction even substance abuse um and so as you come out of this it's natural that you're going to have a slight urge to self-sabotage because you've just been in um painful cycles for so long it's it makes perfect sense for the minute that you get happiness for you to sabotage it because you feel like it's going to be taken from you or you feel like you don't deserve it and so you're going to need in the month of march to really fight the urge to uh, self-sabotage because i see a lot of success coming your way uh, whether it be financial um, or emotional and spiritual i just see you being successful and so you're going to have to focus and work hard on not sabotaging those things you'd be very surprised at how easy it is to sabotage yourself when you have gone through uh, very traumatic or difficult experiences um, repeatedly it, it's very easy very easy to sabotage yourself so you're going to have to actually work hard at uh, not doing that and getting comfortable with the idea that you are deserving and worthy of great things in your life despite the things that you've been through and despite how people have treated you so yeah your focus is going to have to be on um, not sabotaging the success that's coming your way so the next two cards are your advice for the month of March. We have the Knight of Swords, I mean, sorry, the Knight of Wands in the reverse and the Tower card. So what you don't want to do any longer is try to avoid disaster and end up making disaster happen by trying to avoid it. Okay, so I'm trying to, let me think of an example. Okay, for example, let's say that you are prone to believing that relationships are going to end up in abandonment, right? Maybe you've been abandoned a lot, and so in your mind, relationships, intimacy, connection equals abandonment, okay? So you spend a lot of time trying to avoid that abandonment by shutting your emotions off or by um, maybe overcompensating and being too clingy, and those things actually cause your partner to leave and make you feel abandoned that's what i mean when i say trying to avoid things out of fear and then and ending up running right into them 
So it's like basically you're being asked to no longer try to avoid, no longer try to live or make decisions based off of fear because you'll keep manifesting the very things that you fear would happen. So you're putting energy into your own downfall pretty much when you do that um, because the energy that you spent clinging or overcompensating in the relationship or the energy that was spit, spent making sure that you're shutting down and making sure that you're not you know, getting close to that person could have been spent maybe healing your attachment trauma or, or going to a therapist to figure out, you know, this fear of intimacy, or it could be spent trying to genuinely build that bond with your partner. And then maybe you would not have been abandoned. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, or maybe you, uh, the person wouldn't have left and made you feel abandoned. Um, that's what I mean. It's like the energy that you spend trying to avoid disaster leads directly to your downfall when you could have been spending that energy on, um, healing these things at the root instead of trying to avoid them. So you're being asked to no longer make decisions based off of avoidance and fear and instead get to the root of uh, whatever it is that your fears are so I would say overall this is very positive energy um, let's see for your outside energy so the outside energy is basically how people outside of you are influencing you in the month of March and how you are influencing them so how they're impacting you and how you are impacting them so you have the king of Pentacles, the Hierophant in reverse, and the Ten of Pentacles. So, <clears throat> interesting combination here. Basically, what I'm seeing is that um, the way that people are influencing you, it's almost like they are kind of forcing you to find your own identity and find this sense of self worth, is what I'm hearing. Because there's someone or there's people outside of you who keep trying to impose their beliefs or their views onto you. And they don't understand the more they try to push it onto you, the more you rebel and the more you actually find your own identity. It's a good thing for you. This rebellious energy that I'm feeling, it's not like a rebel without a cause. Um, it's a rebel with a cause. Like it's you actually having the right to rebel against this because because the hierophant is in the reverse so that means that these are traditions or ways of thinking um that's being pushed onto you that really are not beneficial to you they're just being pushed on you because that's just the norm so for example like let's say you come from a family who women stay home and they are housewives this is just a random example so in your family it's a tradition you know women stay at home they cook they clean they don't go to work and um you're being expected to to do that as well but you have other plans you know maybe you don't want to be a housewife maybe you don't want to be a wife at all and so you're kind of like eh, i'm not doing that and they're trying to push it onto you but they don't understand that they're only pushing it because it's a norm that has been passed down. It's not necessarily beneficial to you. Not saying there's anything wrong with what they want to do, but it's not beneficial to you. It's simply a norm that they have kind of been brainwashed into following or, or keeping up. And again, I'm not saying anything about gender roles right now, you know, just that's just it's just an example but like I was saying um, it's like a lot of people don't realize that their norms are just things that they didn't even come up with themselves like their beliefs uh, their habits and things like that they didn't even come up with themselves they have kind of been brainwashed to believe them and then they try to get you to follow suit and follow the same pattern and you're just like uh, no and you rebel and you become much more independent and much more stable much more sturdy um, so that's a good thing I would say I'm not sure how they would feel about it because of you rebelling but it's a great thing and it's going to actually lead to a lot of stability and success in your life it's going to lead to a lot of happiness in your life um, kind of going against the grain so on their end we have the nine of swords the three of Pentacles and the three of swords sheesh um, so this is how you're impacting or influencing people with the nine of swords being here this is like grief heartache heartbreak Hmm, what's going on here? You're making some people or some person feel heartbroken? What? All right, we have the three of pentacles. Yeah, this is how you're affecting them. For some of you, this is like a person or people outside of you who want to build with you, but they can't. I feel like for some of you, you may have restricted access to yourself. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. For some of you, you've restricted access to yourself. Like certain people don't have access to you and that's very bothersome to them. 
it's very painful to them. And if you're cross watching, I have to give this disclaimer really quick. If you're cross watching, um, be mindful that my messages, I set the intention for them to come out a certain way. Meaning if you are someone who wants access into someone's life and they have blocked you out, I'm not reading for them. Like this is not, this wouldn't be like, oh, you know, you can listen in on the other energy and it applies to that other person. Only because I feel like cross watching can get dangerous sometimes because these are general messages. So for example, let's say that you've been abandoned by someone recently, right? And then you hear me on here saying, oh yeah, you know, someone has restricted access uh, or someone, you have kicked someone out of your life and restricted access and they're heartbroken. You could be reading that as, okay, I'm the person who's been restricted. I'm the one who got kicked out of someone's life. And then that can be very uh, harmful or detrimental to you because then you can start to think that the messages are specifically about you. And when you have been abandoned in that way, um, you're hypersensitive so you will internalize messages more easily so if I were to say oh yeah the person on this other end they're just you know feeling abundant and happy and they're in love with life and on the other end there's someone who's restricted you can internalize that directly and say oh wow I'm the one who's been abandoned and they're over there living their best life and then you go to sleep tonight feeling like crap even though it's a good chance that this that maybe they're not even feeling that way because this is a general reading you, you see what i'm saying so cross watching just be very mindful of that i set the intention for there to be no cross watching and if you are cross watching um the messages that come through won't be uh really about this other person's life um in a way that will make you feel even more shameful or make you feel even worse or make you feel even more addicted to them if they have rejected or abandoned you i hope that makes sense so now, back to the reading. Like I was saying, the other side of this, the, the um, other people or person outside of you are affected because they want, they want to build something with you. They want it to or they want to. And it's causing them a lot of distress and heartache that they are not able to for some reason. Um, it could be that it's because you, like I said, have broken free from certain norms, certain patterns. And um, it's like you are very, um, you're very mindful about who you let into your life nowadays. Um, because some of you are very future focused, like you came out of a, a dark time or you came out of a headspace where you felt like you were not making your own decisions, like you were living too much for other people or you were you were uh, kind of living life revolving around the way that other people have treated you and you are coming out of that and you don't want to go back to that. So you have to restrict access to certain people or maybe certain people just miss the way that you used to be. Um, but you change for the better. And if you did restrict access, obviously that's for the better as well. But I do see there is some uh, sadness here uh, because of, the, because of um, these changes that you are going through from someone outside of you, there's some sadness. So we're gonna um, pick this up in the extended video. Um, I'm just gonna dive deeper into these messages about uh, you and this other person or these other people. And then we're gonna do some do's and don'ts, uh, meaning what you should focus on in March and what you should avoid. So. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I will leave the link to the extended in the description box and I will see you on my Vimeo channel.